In this Lesson 5 video, we will install and configure the Active Directory Domain Services role on our Server 2016 virtual machines. So I'm in my remote desktop connection manager, and as you can see, I've opened up and started both of my domain controllers that we prepared for the Active Directory role. So our next step in this lesson will be to install that role. Simply done, we come up here to Manage, and we're going to do Add Roles and Features. So Active Directory is a role that we can install on our server. I'll choose Next. It's going to be a role-based or feature-based installation. Again, I'd pause and read the second option there. I'll choose Next. And then I want to make sure that it's pointing towards, first of all, the server that I intended it to be. I do want to install the role first on DC0001, and then we'll do the same thing on 2. And as you can see, those IP addresses that we have here, here's the one we configured, and this is the one for my external uh, network interface card. So it shouldn't be an issue that it's on. I'll choose Next. And then I'm going to come up and do Active Directory Domain Services. Now, as you'll probably want to pause and read, it's going to install some supporting features and services that it needs in order to operate as an Active Directory Domain Controller. So at this point, I'll choose Next. I'll go through and choose all the defaults. Next. And Next. And then if need be, I'm going to click Restart the Destination Server. So if there's a restart needed at this point, it'll go ahead and restart during the install process. So now, as you can see, I'm installing the Active Directory role. Now, I still need to do the configuration to configure Active Directory. This is just the role. So here I'm going to pause real quick while I fire up the other machine. So I've gone ahead and walked through the same wizard. Notice on DC0002, make sure everything that I'm looking for is going to be installed, and I'll choose Install. So now at this point, I'm installing the role on both machines. Let's go over to DC0001, and we can see that the role is installed. So we're going to start to see ADDS come up. We'll go ahead and be patient for the service to start up. We'll make sure both machines are in this location, and then we'll come up here and continue the install. Now that we've installed the role, we're ready to configure and promote our machines to be domain controllers. If you notice, there's a notification here. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to choose Promote This Server to a Domain Controller. Now, if you had challenges at all, make sure you restart your virtual machine uh, if it didn't restart, just an FYI. Here I'm going to add to a new forest. I'm not looking to add a domain controller in an existing forest or add a new domain control, uh, uh, child domain, for example, to an existing forest or new domain. So I'm going to add a new forest. I'm going to go ahead and call my domain a uh, subdomain corp at miim.com. So it's a, a corp subdomain for Active Directory off my main domain, miim.com, and I'll choose next. Now at this point, just go ahead and be patient as it walks through. It's going to go out, make sure that that subdomain off that primary domain hasn't been used, and you'll be ready to go. So be patient here. So now let's just take a minute talking about this password here, the Directory Services Restore Mode Password. Now this is a password that you definitely want to make unique and highly secure but the challenge is you may not remember it, so make sure that you write it down in case you ever need to restore Active Directory in authoritative mode or anything like that. You're going to need this password. So write it down. I call this what's called a red envelope password. I'd actually write it down in an envelope, stick it in a safe, someplace that you and other people know where it's at. So I'll go ahead and put in a nice complex password. something that I will remember. I'll choose Next. Now, delegation for this DNS server cannot be made. That's because we're installing the root. There is no DNS. I don't need to worry about this. It's going to go ahead and create DNS. So I just say Next. Now, I want to give this a good net BIOS name. 
And as you notice, it's chosen Corp. I'm fine with that BIOS name, so I'll go ahead and say Next. Now here is where we're going to change the destination for these uh, for the NTDS database and the sysvol. Remember, we created the S drive, and that's where we want to put these. Again, this is a Microsoft best practice for running Active Directory on virtual machines. Let me get that last one in there. I want to make sure these are all correct, and I'll choose Next. At this point, it'll go ahead and give me a summary. Definitely go through your summary. You want to make sure that you named your Active Directory correctly or you'll be reinstalling because once you name an Active Directory, that's it, folks. So make sure everything else is the same. If for some reason you were adding this, you wanted to add older servers, you wanted to make sure that you move these forest functional levels back. But in my case, we're going to use 2016 and whatever comes up next. So I'll make sure that all of that is correct and I will choose next. Now at this point it's definitely going to need um, a restart to complete the configuration. So I'll pause while it goes through the next step of validating everything that it needs to uh, complete the install and the configuration of Active Directory. So when it's done running the prereqs you definitely want to read through these. It's just giving you some ideas on you know IPv4, 6, but make sure if you notice the prerequisites check was completed, all prerequisites passed, so I'm in good shape and I choose install. Now if for some crazy reason you're doing NT, make sure you go and read through these as it completes the install. It's good for a laugh, but folks, there are probably some folks that have old NT domain controllers out there running in a domain and are installing 2016 server. So you can imagine the challenges between those two. Now finally, you may get a warning on DNS. We briefly talked about this. No worries as you go through. Since it can't find an existing DNS server because it's going to install and configure Active Directory DNS, it's going to give you uh, this warning right here. As you've noticed here, it's gone ahead and done its restart, so I've been signed out of the machine. And thus, I'll just simply need to reconnect here. And it's going to go ahead and do the rest of the install that it needs to do after that boot. Now, as you can see, the machine has restarted. I am logged in. And if I come up here, notice right here, I have Active Directory Domain Services. So if I click on there, I'll get information. I have DNS, as I would expect. And if I come up here, Tools, Active Directory Sites and Services, and Users and Computers. So I'll quickly click on Users and Computers, open it up. There's my default containers and folders. Here's my domain controller. And it is the one that we created. So, wonderful, we're in great shape, and we're ready to do the second one. All right, so now we're ready to do the second domain controller. As you can see, I'm on DC0002. I'm going to come over here and promote this domain controller. This time, however, notice we're going to add this domain controller to an existing domain. So I'm going to come over here and select the domain, and by putting in the credentials here, What it will do is it will go out and see if it can contact, and as you can see, it contacted the corporate domain. So I can say OK here, and then simply choose Next. It will go ahead and ask me if I want this to be a DNS server. This is very similar to the other now at this point. I am going to have to give it the uh, directory services restore mode, and I'm, of course, going to give it the same password that I gave the previous one. So I've gone ahead and put that in. I'll choose Next. And of course, here we are with our DNS, same thing. We're just going to choose next. And where do we want to bring the Active Directory? Well, we only have one domain controller, so we can just leave this as any domain controller or select our initial DC0001. Now, again, make sure that you change this and that you double check, make sure everything is perfect 
for moving the files to the sysvol file that you created on the second domain controller. So we'll say next, moving those over. We'll check the configuration. I know the domain is correct. I don't have to worry about the name because I selected the initial domain we um, created to add the secondary domain controller. And it'll go through and start the process of verifying the prerequisites. So I'll go ahead and pause. As the prerequisites look good, we'll go ahead and choose install. There's our little reminders on the physical network, blah, blah, blah. So it's gone ahead and rebooted. I'll close this out and I'll log back in. So here we go, it's completing the rest of the Active Directory install on DC0002. And as it completes the login for DC0002, we can go over to Tools, we can go to Active Directory Users and Computers, and make sure that we can get in. Now, uh, one thing I would highly suggest, not a fan of the whole administrator thing, I don't like to use it. I like to change its password and not have folks use it so that each person that administers the domain does it under a domain administrator account of their own. So one thing you might want to do here just to check your Active Directory is come in here. And if you notice, there's the user account under users for administrator. Go ahead and create a new admin account. Make sure to add it to the same groups that you would find just as a, as a general starting point add it to the administrators, domain admins, users, all of these groups so that it has the full functionality of the default admin account. And then from there, you're ready to go. All right, so next time around, we'll go ahead and we'll add some clients. We'll add a Windows 10 client. Then we'll look at adding the server administration tools to the client so that we don't have to come to the servers to manage. We'll manage from the client uh, machine. That's the best practice. We'll also add a Windows 8 and a Windows 7 machine, and we'll get started with exploring Active Directory. Take care.